I want to have this deploy first mentality. The idea is I just want to build enough of code right now to be able to get a service to start and stop and get that to be able to run in our Kubernetes environment. And then continue to build out the Kubernetes environment and then the code at the same time as we need it. So we're constantly in this sort of ability to deploy to our Kubernetes cluster, even if it's a local dev cluster. Now, we're about to start writing code here and a couple of things here as we get started. You're gonna hear me talking about two different modes that I'm in at any given time. I start a lot in programmer mode. I'm in programmer mode. What does that mean? It means I'm just looking for 10, 15, 20 lines of code that work. I don't care about idioms, styles, guidelines. I care about nothing other than find me 20 lines of code that work. Once we're done with the programming, then we're gonna move into engineering. How do we put this code in our project in a way where we can maintain mental models, that we can maintain it, that others can maintain it, that we can expand on it, that we can debug it. It's all gonna be about being able to maintain, manage, and debug the code. That's when we're in engineering mode. But we gotta do programming first. Now, one of the hardest things that I found when I switched to Go was trying to identify a project structure that would allow me to be able to maintain mental models and be able to maintain, manage, and debug our code bases over the long period of time. I'd say that it took me probably five or six years to get to this project structure. It's not the only project structure that will work, obviously. It's just the one that I have finally figured out that works for lots of different types of projects as well, but really well when we're talking about building services. So here, what I'm gonna share with you is a lot of uh, Bill Kennedy and others I've worked with over the years to help kind of um, refactor this and get it in a place that I'm really comfortable with. And that code that you see in service that we're gonna rewrite, that's my starting code for any new project that's uh, for sure service-based. If it's CLI-based only, I'm probably not using that. I can simplify things. But if it's server-based, service-based, uh, I start with this code all the time. Okay, let's go through the project structure. I'm gonna do that looking at the original project and then I'll move those layers over as we go. But one really important thing for me is we want layering, not grouping. Layering, not grouping. With this idea that every layer kind of defines a domain where we can set policies and guidelines and standards. We have to hold true to them. We have to have real big committee meetings if we're gonna be looking to change sort of the standards around these, these layers. And policy is really about what we can and can't do in that particular layer of code. And this is gonna allow us to have mental models of everything that we do. So here's another thing that's super important to me. There have been many studies over the last 30 something years, and I have links to them if you wanna see them. And in all the, at least the two studies that I've read about, they came to the same conclusion, that the average person cannot maintain more than five things in their head at any given time. So if you're asking somebody to try to maintain more than five things in their head at any given time, you're setting them up for failure. Three is really the optimal number. I'm gonna talk big about mental models. When we talk about a mental model of your code, that means you know where everything is, you know all the workflows, you know all the behaviors, you know the semantics, you know if there's a bug in the code, we don't need a debugger. Our logs and our mental model allow us to identify where that bug is and fix it. If you need a debugger, I would say our mental model of the code base has failed and we have to seriously start to question what we're doing. 
Historically, nobody on my teams that I manage are allowed to turn a debugger on without my permission. This includes when I was working in C Sharp prior to 2013. And that's because when that bug hit production, nobody was allowed to turn the debugger on in production. So you can't use it at your desk. Everything we do for the next three days is really gonna be about making sure that we establish a strong mental model of this code base and understand what we're doing, why we're doing it, and know where everything is. Are there gonna be moments where I can't find something? Possibly. When that happens, I start to get scared because that means that I've lost my mental model of the code base. Did I name something incorrectly? Did I put something somewhere? Is a policy wrong? What's going on? I, I freeze and I start to really question what I'm doing. You wanna do that. I just wanna say a few more things here too because it drives everything that I'm doing here. We're gonna focus on, on a deploy first. We're gonna focus on being able to maintain, manage and debug the code base. But I've been writing code for over, professionally for over 30 years. I'm tired. I really wanna to try to retire in five years. I really, really, really do. And do anything other than write code. You might find that crazy, but I really would like to do something different, preferably outside for the second half of my life. Now, what's important, I think, is the legacy that you're leaving behind in everything you do. What is the legacy that you're leaving behind? The work that we do is virtual. We're not building a house. We're not building something physical, right? I always thought it would be cool to have some product in a store at Walmart that somebody can buy, but it's not what we do. So what I don't want for myself and what I don't want for any of you on this call is to finish your career 30 something years later and not have a single line of code in production. Not have something that you did still impacting some part of the technology that's running around this planet. That to me would be a crime, right? You don't have anything to show for the work you've done over, over the decades. Now, it isn't that hard for that to happen to you if you're not really focused on the idea that whatever code you're working on right now, you're just a steward of that code. It is your turn to sort of work on it and maintain it. And I've seen this happen too many times, especially during times where there's mergers, and buyouts, and teams disappear. If the code you're writing today is not for the next person that you don't know, if the code you're writing today isn't, being written in a way that somebody can come in without a debugger and be able to learn the code base and start to maintain it and manage it, it's going to get thrown out. It's going to be discarded. It's going to be rewritten, maybe even in another language. And then all that time and effort that you spent, all those nights you didn't go home, all those nights you didn't go out, just got thrown out the door because the code is no longer in use. This happens when you only care about yourself and not who is going to be coming next. I've seen it too many times. Now I've got at least two code bases today. One's over 20 years old and one's 10 years old that's still being used in production and other scatterings of code that I know are still in production over time. And I hope in five years when I leave that I have that. Now, obviously I think 20 years is really long and at some point that code really should be rewritten. But this is what I want for you. And so what I'm also gonna be teaching here is how do I think about that? How do I get to that? When I'm stressing out about mental models, it's because I want somebody else to be able to come in and leverage this without me needing to sit there for three days as well. A little documentation in the code should be able to do that. I want you to have that mindset too. For the full course, visit courses.artandlabs.com.